Hi. Design is all about a mindset. And so is design thinking. Design thinking is all about a mindset. And that's why we are seeing the design center here, the world's first fintech design center, dedicated for application of design thinking to create world-class fintech products. So designing great products starts with a design mind. And if I have to go into four pieces of a puzzle, design mind, then design space, which is what this design center is. Next, it goes to design process and design framework. All these four together ensures that we churn out world's best fintech products. And rightfully, that's the reason why this is named uniquely as 8012, which represents the latitude and longitude of this place, the epicenter of world's best fintech products. In front of you is the coin mural, of course, all Indian currency. To keep reminding in our journey of designing for digital transformation, what is the highest alignment that we all should have? Which is the three basic needs for the bank. Store money, move money across the globe safely, securely, effectively, efficiently, and of course, borrow, invest. So every time we refer to this coin mural, it reminds us the purpose of our existence as organization intellect is to help customers move money across the globe safely and securely. So what does this self-portrait of Rembrandt show us? There are three different stages here. In a digital transformation journey at a financial institution, there might be unconscious silos amongst key stakeholders. It could be the agenda of a business head, agenda of a CTO, or agenda of a CIO. And the earlier we ensure that all these key stakeholders start meeting eye to eye in your journey of digital transformation, we'll be able to create better products, better solution, and more importantly, reduce complexity. Complexities, complexities, at the minimum we can see five different complexities. Disparate architecture, data management, multitude of products, changing regulatory compliances and other regulations, and finally different technologies. So as such, we do have multiple complexities, and added to that is this unconscious silo. And therefore, how do we address all these complexities and unconscious silos, still keep customer in the middle when we are solving problems for you? Keeping customer in the middle of everything that we do requires a boundaryless thinking. And that's where nature teaches us how to be boundaryless in our thinking. Here we see birds of different varieties coexisting in the same tree. Why? Because they have a boundaryless view in front of them. Same way, if we could bring that boundaryless thinking around every problem that we are trying to address for the customer and environment, we would be able to be future focused in the solution. And that is the one that has taken us to what we call as unmoved, which translates to boundaryless thinking, which is our unique approach in design thinking when it comes to preparing the design mind. So we have three different design approaches that we follow. The first one talks about desirability of customers, technology feasibility, and business viability. Therefore, we'll be able to give unique solution. More importantly, the desirability of customers 
can be at a mystery level. Therefore, the second design approach. How do we start with the mystery, but move to heuristics and come about having an algorithm of everything that we do? In other words, you see things that are scattered to bringing in more systematic approach to things. And finally, the third design approach, a homegrown approach, which helps identify the unstated requirements of the customer. What are the requirements that have been assumed by the customer or perhaps not even been foreseen into the future as requirements? And that could be the differentiator. So in other words, we start with desirability, which could be a mystery and leading to unstated requirements. And how do we identify unstated requirements? By looking at patterns and anti-patterns around the customer's ecosystem, around the end users. And the moment we see different patterns and anti-patterns, we connect the dots. And that helps us to identify any blind spots that we may have. Blind spots as in, I don't know what I don't know. Therefore, can we go deeper to understand that and address it? More customers per product, more products per customer, more transactions per customer. This is the outcome of our way of applying first principles theory to get a world view of banking. And therefore, how do we keep focusing this all throughout? And that is where we arrived at a copyright work of three laws of design thinking. It starts with less is more. Less is more in terms of less number of clicks, less number of screens when it comes to technology. When it comes to operation, less number of approvals. And next comes last 2% equals 200%. 98% of the things that we do could be the same. How do we focus on 2%, that last 2% that will leave the customers with 200% experience? And when it comes to prioritization, we moved away from the linear thinking of giving a weightage of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is what we normally keep doing. But there, our mindset would be, I can address things sequentially. However, weightage is something that weighs heavily on humans' shoulder, right? So when we add weightage to our prioritization as 10 grams, 100 grams, and 1,000 grams, then we know which one we need to address first. In other words, when customers come to us with a list of things that needs to be worked on, we go with 1,000 gram items first that would possibly give you 80% of relief in the shortest time possible. And that is the three laws that we have defined to ensure our application of design thinking gives an outstanding output and performance for you. OK, one of the key things, one of the key things in design thinking is observing patterns and anti-patterns around many of the transactions that are happening, many of the functions, many of the operations at the financial institutions. Patterns are things that are working well, the positives. And anti-patterns are things that may tend to go wrong or things where you will have certain challenges which needs to be addressed. Therefore, we will have a better solution to the problem. So patterns and anti-patterns could be around your domain or technology, in some cases both. And observing and identifying them is key to the journey of design thinking for digital transformation. Framework is very important to simplify. We looked at complexity. Frameworks helps us to reduce that complexity. The first one we see here is a knowledge framework. We see a business here represented in what we call as L0 or cartographic view. 
Can we have a cartographic view of an entire universal banking? And from there, an L1 could break down further, detailing multiple layers of levels of detailing. In this case, we see a core banking. And from there, we go into next layer of detailing. We pick up an element from L1, go into L2, which shows us the user journey. So what this helps is to have a cartographic view of the business ecosystem that we are trying to solve or develop products for, and go into each of those sub-elements into user journeys and all the way up to documentation that will lay out the steps that happens as part of the user journey. And this helps in focusing on every element. And this also helps in identifying blind spots. Is there one particular element in the L0 that we have missed addressing? From our understanding of FinTech, we have come up with a similar L0 equivalent for every major products that we have. You take cards to liquidity to any of uh, wealth solution to whatnot. We have and we call that a black book. That helps us to understand your business to the minutest level possible. And that is the journey that one can take for digital transformation by looking at the cartographic view. The next important framework is the architecture framework. Can we have architecture understanding and detailing around customer relationship, operations management, around performance, around analytics, risk, integration, and security? And it naturally comes as a nice acronym, COPARIS. We call that the COPARIS framework, which helps address the non-functional requirements, which also helps to identify any unstated requirements around these seven areas. Therefore, we can provide the best future-focused solution for you. Our approach to design thinking is very unique, and therefore, it naturally warrants a unique five-step process to apply design thinking for problem solving. Why is our approach unique? We start with preparing the design mind, bringing in the boundaryless thinking in the minds of all of our designers. Only then will we be able to look beneath the surface, peel layers, and look at the actual problem, the real problem, and not get carried away by looking at a symptom as a problem. Rest of the steps flows very beautifully, all the way up to converging to what works well, and finally telling the story to end the five-step process of design thinking. Succeeding in the journey of design thinking requires a very deep culture in the organization, a DNA that will ensure design thinking and some mindset continues in everything that we do. So for us, we have knowledge brand, which is the four C's, content, context, connect, communicate. And we have the leadership brand represented by four R's, removing conflict, removing limiting beliefs, reinforcing positives, and taking risk. And finally, the values brand, which talks about passion, humility, integrity, and respect, fair fun. And all three are connected through high performance, wealth creation for the associates in the organization, and building relationships with customers and within our employment workforce. And finally, the most important part, fun in everything that we do. And we believe having fun in everything that we do is what differentiates us from the rest in terms of implementation certainty, in terms of providing world-class solution for the customers.
The space that you see here, the Coparis lab, where co-creation happens, teams come together, different teams come together to co-create best solutions. And this space also helps to expand the imagination of the designers and the team. We start with, how do I imagine most efficient and effective operations design for the bank? It helps teams to use the kiosk to keep imagining how do we bring in efficiency to the operations design part. Same way we have technology design space. How do we imagine the most disruptive technology solution for the customers? Keeping future focus in mind and removing those complexities that we talked about. How do we look at different technologies that are available to come about best design and therefore best solutions for the customer? And here is space to imagine best business design. How do we work with customers and co-create a best business design? Using the FT wall and using the magnetic wall, where we get to work and customize a solution for the customers that brings about the best and the only needed elements for you to run the bank. We saw the space for imagining operations, technology, and business design, where all those ideas come together here. And this is where the solution synthesis happened in Omega, where there is business design that can happen on one side of the wall, writable wall, of course. There is operations design that can happen on another side. And technology design on the third side of the room. This helps in bringing in a common understanding and synthesize best solution, best design, best architecture, therefore the best products for customers. The journey of applying design thinking for digital transformation begins with a mindset. Imaginative. Imagining the best technology operations and business design. And therefore moving into a learning mind of how do I get the cartographic view? How do I understand and detail out the customer ecosystem then moves into co-creating or the creating mind for best solution. And then comes being effective in whatever we provide as a solution, bring in that effectiveness. And finally, build in all elements that we will be able to influence the end users for having an accelerated adoption of your offerings to the end user. And that is our approach to design thinking. And that is our unique offering to the customer. And that is why using 8012 FinTech Design Center, the world's first design center, we are able to keep generating world-class solutions.